<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Core Community Artlink Spooky Comic Making Workshop, workshop number five. I'm Cannibal Colum, and this is Petrifying Podge. I'm a pacifist. Yeah, yeah, spooky intro, yeah. Okay, so okay. today... We're nearing the end. We're going to be doing pencils and inks. So this is all over the podge. Uh, so this workshop is a little longer than usual, but it's going to be absolutely packed with podge giving you loads of advice on how to do the proper penciling and the inking for your comic. Right. So bear with me as you're going to see uh, a sped up time lapse version of me drawing and inking a sheet without any dialogue because there was an awful lot of cursing trying to get it done as fast as I could. So without further ado, let's attempt some art, everybody. Okay, fantastic. Penciling time. Podge, talk me through the exciting process of penciling and inking a comic page. Well, the first thing you're probably going to see is that I've already put in the, the caption boxes. I've put in the boxes already. The oh, print. yeah, I can see that. So you've lined no, up. The um, only reason I did that is because it'll be really boring watching me draw in square boxes with a ruler. So all I did is I transferred over the, 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 six, the six pounds we were using in the thumbnail sketches onto the sheet. That's all you missed, nothing else. Terribly dramatic. So <laughs> in the first panel, what I'm doing is I, um, okay, what am I doing now? Podge, get your hand out of the way. Thank what you. are you doing, Podge? I am drawing in the kiosk for the cinema. because And what I'm doing is I'm shifting, I, I've drawn everything slightly to the left. To give myself some space to get well to give the writer some space over on the right to put in some dialogue because I know there's dialogue going in the first panel. The writer, so that's I'm drawing in the that'll be you, that'll be you, or your evil twin, whichever one of you wants to do it. So I'm drawing in the chaos and I'm drawing in an extra character who may or may not be William, but um, there you go. And uh, what I'll end up doing is uh, is down at the bottom end, we I haven't gotten that far yet because I'm talking ahead of myself is I'll put it in a little assortment of um, goblins and gathering up to, to go in. Uh, I also fr I'm also freeing up a little bit of space on the side to put in a door, a kind of an entrance door, so you get the idea of where they are, where they're going. And right over the top of the kiosk, I'm going to write in, I haven't done it yet, but I will be writing in Light or Cinema. So that all the information will be given on the pound. There'll be very little need for as dialogue whatsoever because it'll all be there it's like a bunch of guys queuing up and they're heading into the cinema right so you're essentially yeah. telling the whole story through the artwork yeah as much as I, as much as i can as much as i can put in as much information as i can to say to save on uh dialogue really if 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 it doesn't need it absolutely yeah. so i presume so, while you're doing this you would be have you would have your thumbnails close to hand or you'd be referencing your thumbnails Oh yeah, well, it's kind of off camera to the uh, to uh, to, but it's it's actually right next right next to where my eraser is right now. <laughs> okay. I didn't exactly want to have it on screen, but I wanted it on hand to to know what what was going where, and it was you know you know like I said before in the previous video, it's just to give yourself an idea as to where everything was going. Absolutely. So all I'm doing is just looking looking to the left every now and then, going, am I missing anything? No, I'm not. Everything's good. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, like so, roughly everybody's going in the same position. I'm just, I'm just tightening them up, making them better looking, so that they're not stick figures. Okay. Um, yeah. As you can see, I'm, as you can see there, I'm drawing in the side of the wall where I'm going to put in the door in the background, or at least the side of the door, just to give a slight impression. That's where we're going. I do believe I draw one or two little, little goblins heading in that direction anyway. Yeah, you got a whole bunch of goblins in that first panel. That's what I like about doing yeah, small goblins. I think, I think about four or five little fellas in, in that one yeah. tiny panel. Uh, like, you know. there, there should be one guy. Oh, excuse me. No, it's a, it's a repeated trope that I'll do throughout the, uh, throughout the comic, but there should be one guy in the corner who is literally right up in front of you and like really close to the viewer, and he's kind of looking and smiling and smirking at you. Yes, I can see him. So, on to uh, exciting panel number two. Oh, right. Panel number two. That, uh, mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, that was the inside of the cinema. So what I did is I, I did it from the point of view of the cinema screen as you're looking back at all the chairs and everybody sitting down, where we have directly in the center is a dragon who has a uh, popcorn on his head <laughs> and is <laughs> looking pretty um, not happy. He's very displeased. Uh -huh. I'm hoping to have a displeased look on his face. 
while there's chaos going on around with, with all these little goblins. Much like, much like the cinema scene in, in Gremlins. Yes. Uh, what, I al- what I also did is, um, oh, well, if you, actually, if you actually put a big X from corner to corner of that panel, you'll find that the, the dragon is directly in the center. That's intentional, that's in purpose. Your eye is drawn to the center of the panel. And, everything, and then, you, then you span out and you see all the chaos of all these little goblins. Once again, I've got a big goblin in the corner just staring right at, staring right at you. Um, like I said, it's a trope that I keep doing. But not only that, it helps fill up space an awful lot because... Um, oh, I also put an arm hanging down from the top throwing popcorn, which does the same thing. Because if you draw too many things and, and uh, too many little things all at once in just one panel, it, can, it, it will always end up turning into a little bit of a mess. You won't be able to see any, you can't focus on any, any one thing in particular. So at least okay. with that, you can focus on the, the hand, the goblin looking at you and the dragon in the center. Super, okay, you're flying along here, almost as if we've time-lapsed and speeded up the video or something. So you're already onto the final panel. <laughs> no, that's just me being super. <laughs> uh, the third panel, which is down below it, uh, what I did there, uh, all, all that was, was if I, you know, you'd have to talk me through this again, it was the dragon going towards the project, projection booth. Yeah. Yes? Absolutely. Right. Well, when that's written down, it's not very dramatic. So what I did is that I tilted the cam- the viewfinder, not, not from straight, I just tilted it at an angle like that, just to give it a dramatic pose as it's going up a set of stairs to the projection booth. That was easily done. I just needed to tilt the camera, draw a door, put projection booth once again, so we don't need any dialogue. And I have the silhouette of the dragon, like you're looking from behind him. So all I needed to do was draw on the shape of the dragon, the shape of the tail, to give the viewer the idea that, um, well, it's a dragon heading up. Super. And so, my hands out of the way, I can look and look at the third panel. No, no. Oh, yeah, you, so you started inking now. Oh, am I, am I inking? Oh, right. Well, <laughs> do me to talk about it. Sorry, yeah, I'm yeah, work away. yeah, yeah. Well, when it, com- when it comes to the inking, um, you must make sure that all your pencils are done perfectly because once you start doing inking, there's no rubbing out. You can use a bit of Tipex if you make small mistakes, but if you do anything dramatically bad, that's it. You're, you're scrapped. You're doing the whole thing all over again. So everything has to be nice and careful when you're, when you're inking. And you take, you take your time. Every so often you stop doing what you're doing and look at your drawing. You go, okay, okay, it's going well. And then you go back at it again. So what I was doing... So, as you can see, what I did here is, well, what you will see me doing is, <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, my hand gets in the way an awful lot. For the eyes, I changed up the eyes, I made them, I made them pitch black because I, want, I needed them to pop off the screen more than anything else. And you, uh, you can kind of see it there with the guy behind the counter, the not William character. You, see his, you can see his eyes just popping off the screen. You're going to see it with him and you're, you're definitely going to see it with all the goblins. It, it, it'll, be, it'll be the most focal point thing you're going to find. And yes. any and all of these little drawings. And you waited until so, the ink stage to fully fill in those blacks. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't need to do it. If you know, uh, uh, when you're drawing, if you know in your head what's going to be filled in black, you don't have to use the pencil to fill it in black. You're just wasting time there. Okay. If you want, you can put little X's to say to, 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 to tell yourself where it's going to be filled in black. But okay. I'm too good for that. I don't even need to do that anymore. <laughs> I know myself what's going to be shaded in. So I just basically you're just with the pencil, just doing in the outlines first. You could fill the rest in in with the inks. Okay. Uh, there we go. What I'm doing is a tiny little bit of perspective on the canopy there of the of the kiosk. It's to show it's just to show a little bit of depth. You can see it. When I get my hand out of the pod, get your bloody hand out of the way. For that. There we go. There we go. You can see it's a little bit of perspective, so it's not just a flat image. It's you're kind of looking in underneath it a little bit. Let's get kind of and, uh, la- Later on, I'll put some shadows inside and shading to give it a bit of depth. I made it look like a, one of the old school cinemas by putting little light bulbs around it, as you can see. Once a bit, give it a bit. It just gives it a bit of character more than anything else. I'll so, stick in some brickworks as well. That that was interesting. What you said about using shadows to give it depth. So talk about that. That's kind of an important part of the inking process, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now with this, with the, with this first panel, we'll probably come back to it because you'll see me. Uh, I'll skip it all for. Uh, I know I skipped it all for now, but I, okay. I eventually get back to it and I start using what's called mark making techniques. Usually that, invo- uh, that involves literally scribbling. You get a drawing pad, you get or a sheet or two of paper, and you just fill it full of scribbles. But you never try to repeat the same scribble. 
never Tr always try to invent new new ways of scribbling because because uh, these mark making techniques can do everything from putting in shadows uh, to showing depth perspective to showing textures like like there's a different texture that would be from from glass than there would be to fur you know they're different textures so you'd have to find different ways of messing with your marks to uh, to come up with it okay. like uh, like the dragon when I ink in the dragon you're going to see you're going to see the dragon particularly when he's holding there in the one two in the fourth pound you're going to see the dragon's hand and he's going to have some scales put onto him. And that's a, that's a, that's that's a technique to to show the difference between the dragon and the goblins. The goblins have a few spots, but the dragon has uh, these kind of scaly effects, like a snake. So it's a way of putting some detail into the into the into the characters. Oh yeah, yeah, and it it gives everything depth and depth and perspective. You should see it by the end. You could see me kind of do. Am I doing it there yet? No, yeah, you're putting oh, I'm, I'm putting in some shadows in the background there to show that that door is further back. It, it kind of looks like it's further back, and you're going down a bit of an alley. Okay. And that's just putting in straight lines. All I did there was put in little, little, uh, little link straight lines. Okay. Oh, and I can see you're putting in little bricks here and there to kind of to give that that wall a nice feel as well, which is really effective. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's that's uh, all I'm doing there is adding a bit of character to the building because um, uh, the artist Will Slaney once once talked to me about buildings. He uh, he loved my work, but he he, he was talking. He was saying I have a bit of a problem with drawing buildings, and he he was right. So what he what he was telling me is that you need to add a bit of character to the buildings. Uh, mo most buildings always look like they lived or lived in. They don't all oh, they don't look like they were just built now. You okay. know, so you have to find ways of putting cracks in the walls or or making it look a little bit disheveled or or like there might be some water stains on it, and. I took that to heart and I started adding into my buildings and hopefully it it, it, it helps out here. Okay, and I as you can see, I'm putting the de I'm putting shadows in into the canopy to show that depth I was on about. Do you see how it's going back into the distance now? Yeah. Okay. So like so so small little again kind of these these small little mark makings you're talking about make a huge difference too to how the panel looks overall. It really gives it depth. Oh yeah, sure. I'm even putting shadows underneath underneath the uh, the goblins to make them look like they're standing on the ground as well. You can see the guy, but you can see the guy uh, yeah. uh, buying the ticket. You can see the little shadow under under his bum. Yeah, that's really effective. Yeah, so it it looks like he's not floating in midair. He's grounded now. Oh, and of course, all the black guys make all the guys pop out. Yes. Yeah, we're probably going to do the same thing with the dragon. Suddenly, I'm mo moving with super speed. Kind of the flash mode. Oh yeah, and uh, you can see the shadows going in under his eyebrows. Yeah. Under the dragon's eyebrows. Yeah. See what are we doing with the, this little guy who's up the front looking straight at you? He should have big black eyes in a second where he'll pop out. So really, I with the ink, I put, in, I put in little details like like popcorn flying out of the hand as well too to show yeah, things yeah. are getting messy. Oh no, uh, yeah, see outlines are all done first. Then we go back in and we start putting in little. Oh, okay, so you that. kind of do it in stages. You do all your outlines, and then you go back and see oh, outlines first. Outlines first to get the basic idea of the whole panel. And you can see I'm starting to ink in the the shadows in the ears, and the shadows yeah. in the eyes, and the blackness of the mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. a little popcorn. Up. I even managed to write popcorn upside down without flipping over the sheet. I'm that good. <laughs> uh, okay. and I'm putting the guys in the background in silhouettes because we don't need to see. We don't need. Not only do we not need to see these these details. But if I did put in details in those guys, it would get messy, like I was like I was saying. You wouldn't be able to see the whole picture then. So if yes. I put them in silhouette in the background, you know they're there. Fantastic. And here we are. And there, there I'm putting the big shadow of the dragon. See, you, all I needed was the shadow because you know we, I've already set the dragon up in the, in, the, in the panel before it. So you know who you're dealing with down there. Yeah. I'm using the rulers to keep the, to keep the, the lines of the, the door straight. Mm -hmm. And it's on a nice little dramatic angle. It just... They're, it's actually called Dutch angles. Don't ask me why. I don't. I'm not even sure if it was invented by the Dutch, but I'm putting uh, Dutch angles in, and I put a bit of mark making techniques in the corner of the walls to show some a little bit of texture that he's going up walls. Okay. And the banisters. Yes. And you can see the scales that were drawn that were drawn onto the dragon's hand in the panel next to it. Okay, so you were closer up here, so you can you were able to put more detail into the into the image. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I put a little bit of mark making technique in the background, a cross hatching, what we call, and I put some scales on the hands as he's grabbing the uh, the film reel. In the next panel, I did something really. I did. I repeated pretty much the same process as I did with the second panel, except this time the uh, the goblins are all in hysterics. But what I did, what I did with the uh, one of the goblins is I had him breaking the panel. 
which means he's coming outside of the panel. And not only is he coming outside of the panel, but he's trying to escape into the bottom panel, if you look at his hand. Yeah, he's reaching down. It's a, little it's a little technique certain artists do. A lot of uh, Marvel and DC guys do this. And it's, al it's always handy to do it every now and then. But you have to, you have to prep the drawing before you, eat, before you ink in the box. Otherwise, you have lines going through hands. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. So what's he doing? He's reaching on into the last panel, which, and we have him drawn in there. I, I like to think it's the same guy again, <laughs> as, as he's trying as he's trying to run away. So he's like, you know, he's jumping from panel to panel. Yeah. And like he's really up in your face again. So uh, it covers an awful lot of space. We get the idea that there's a goblin here, so I can just put in a few, just a few extra little goblins in the background. So it's so it's not um uh clustered with them. Okay, yeah, so one, one big goblin means you don't have to draw 100 goblins in its place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get the idea again. And I can have a bit of fun with, with doing some details on him later on. Like I put the shadows in his ears again. Yeah. Some darkness. I also put the, uh, the outside of the Lido, because this is the first time you're going to be seeing the Lido cinema. I put, it, uh, I put it off in perspective, going off into the distance using angles. That, then you do need rulers to keep, to keep, your, keep your line straight. I did use a ruler at the start. Oh, and you have all the little penciling. Yeah. Then we have all the little goblins running away, and um, for some very strange reason, there's a very mysterious looking vampire carrot amongst them. <laughs> you managed to sneak in the vampire carrot. <laughs> well, I have a rule. I do have a rule that when I'm doing a comic strip, I do every, I do, I do everything that the, the the writer is looking for, and once they're happy, I start putting in little Easter eggs for myself, <laughs> just for me, uh, just for me. So I, yep. Yeah. Uh, there I am, uh, inking in the little door cinema, putting in the barn door, and I repeated, which is very important to keep continuity going, I repeated the kiosk from the first panel. Uh, yes, yes. I to show that, that. Your state, you're still in the same location. And they're all going mental then, uh, running all different ways out of the cinema. I think, I think I have one or two guys just coming out the door. I'm not sure. I think I did. I think so, yeah. I think there's one, yeah, that's just running straight out the door. And that's pretty much done then. So, you, you know, you're going back over previous panels to do little bits and pieces. Yeah, what I'm doing then is I'm going back over the other panels, touching up little bits that I may have left out. Okay. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't want to do, I, I never want to do too much because I'm always afraid that it'll look like one big blur. Okay. So I just tap away and I just tap away at the, at the different panels, one after the other, until I'm, until I'm happy. They're just all little touch-ups, little shadows underneath chins and little lights on the eyes. And you're done. And there we go. Okay, and that's the whole penciling and inking process. One more stage left uh, for our final workshop. We'll be covering the lettering, which is just putting down all the words in your comic. Sounds a little bit boring, um, but this is going to be a really short workshop that we're going to do that'll just give you some hints and tips to make sure it looks really, really great. So, we'll sounds see. Bit, sounds a bit workshop. technical. It's easy. It's good. It's good. Okay. It'll definitely be interesting. I promise. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you. Most people won't. <laughs> see you next time, everyone.